Hello, guys, and welcome back to the NW Sportscast. The Mariners make a massive trade offloading Marco Gonzalez, Evan White, and Jared Kalnick for honestly not much in return, Levi. What is your initial response to the trade? I know you were you did have an initial reaction yesterday. It was quite positive. I was expecting a lot worse. I was more negative than you, and that's saying a lot because you're a pretty negative fan, to be completely honest with you. Well, you know, Drew, I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a negative fan. I would say I'm a okay. consistent. I would say I'm consistent with how I am a fan. I have been negative. I will admit this. I've been negative about Jared Kelnick throughout his time on the Mariners, which is why I'm actually not that sad to see him gone. A, a lot of people um, who are a lot you know, more positively thinking maybe Kelnick can break out, maybe he can really kind of be an all-star guy, but I, I've seen his numbers. I've watched him play a lot. I just don't think that he is going to be an all-star guy. You know, there's never been a player who has had a, uh, a career as bad as his began, who has ended up making the all-star team. There's an article about that last season. Um, literally, his, his WRC Plus was worse than anyone who's ever made an all-star team in his first season. So the chances that he was ever going to actually be a like, solid player was pretty, pretty low. Um, and he did have one insanely good month, one in three years. So I honestly, like, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with this. I'm not mad that he's gone. Uh, I think that he also kind of brings some bad energy to the clubhouse. You know, there's a I reason why. I disagree. There's a reason why Scott Service didn't start him in the last week of the season in the most critical moments. Because he wasn't like, playing baseball for the last two months. No, he was, he was on the team. He was actually hitting well. And yet the Mariners didn't have him in the lineup four out of the last seven games of the season. Why do you think that is? If it's not because he's a I don't bad think player. I this bad attitude, Levi. I think that's fake. You think it? You then why? Why was he on the bench? Because I think Scott Service. You didn't think it's him. fake? I think Scott you Service. Think, you think his bad attitude is fake, even though he literally injured himself because of it? That was passion. Passion. Well, that's passion. A bad attitude, Levi. You say you have a bad attitude. Passion. I, I've seen you. Julio has like passion. That. It's just passionate. Julio has passion. No, he doesn't. Julio strikes out with the bottom, the bottom of the ninth, base is loaded, and he smiles. I wouldn't say he smiles, but the bottom line is, I think oh, you want me to value, pull the video. I think Kalanick's value was at the highest that it's ever going to be. I don't think he's ever going to have a really good season, but I think this season you saw since you did see some ability that he showed in April and in September. Some he I was think, the best player in baseball in April. And then he was the worst player in baseball in May, June. So he's not the worst player. Listen, uh, he, he was hitting like 108. He, he has like four or five years of club control left. He's getting paid seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars this next year. You're gonna see Jared Kelnick go to and I, the Atlanta and I Braves, think, and you're gonna see him have a really productive year. And I, who did we I get disagree. in return? Who did we get in return? Absolutely. Yeah, no, that is nobody. So that's the thing. We I, traded. I, I am, I am Let me talk. With this. Let me finish. We we traded still a potential all-star in my mind. He's going to go to the Braves, and he's going to hit 270 for 25 home runs for the next 10 years. And and we're going to Okay, gonna wow, that's really bold. And, and everybody, you know, thinking, oh, well, we offloaded $15 million. I don't care about $15 million. This isn't a salary-capped league. This doesn't go back. To Jerry Depoto or Justin Hollander. You know who this goes back to, Levi? It goes back to John Stanton. I agree. Of course. Stanton is not giving them the flexibility that we need to win a World Series. Straight up. Jerry Depoto is not this dumb. This is not a good trade for baseball. Baseball wise, this is not a good trade. This is a good trade for unloading salary. But when you purely look at who we got in return and who no, we I agree with that. I agree it is that. undeniable. It's not close. Jared Kalnick has so much more potential, and it's not like he's holding. Not like he's had a twenty million contract. He's getting paid seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, four or five years of club control. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that John Stanton has to control how we build this team, not of how good we have. You know, it's not about who's good at this point. It's he's giving he's giving Jerry Depoto and and Hollander X amount of money, and he's not willing to go over that. And in order for Jerry Depoto to do what he needs to do, he has to unload contracts. But good teams do not unload contracts and get rid of potential superstars in the process. And I know you don't think Jerry Kalanick is. I still see that. 
And I know, I, I don't think it'll happen, but I still think Jared Kelenic's floor, floor is an average starting outfielder. I do. He's still really I don't know. He's 20, what, three, four? He's 24. Man. I mean, he turned 24 this offseason, right? So, I mean, this guy is young, and he's shown a lot of flash. He hits the ball really, really hard. His advanced numbers are a lot better than what his actual numbers say. And I know you're not a big fan of that, Levi, but it just it just proves to me, and it, it proves to clearly the MLB that he's still a valuable player. And we only gave up – I think uh, the Mariners took $4.75 million dollars um in you know so they're they're eating 4.75 million dollars of the evan white slash mark gonzalez in total which really isn't that much i was expecting more so i mean that's good but it's just it's it's really frustrating getting rid of talent and and same thing with gino getting rid of talent that could help you next year and and it's impossible to deny that gino and jared kelnick would help you next year for now we have four guy we have a backup catcher we have a couple of relief pitchers and what a third baseman i, I mean it's it's ridiculous we're not going to win like this yeah yeah um drew you make a lot of good points and i do i do agree that i think the return was pretty laughable cole phillips you know he's he's our number 15 overall prospect he is our second highest rated pitching prospect um behind emerson hancock so he could be something but he's also 19 just had tommy john surgery so you never really know with him um what here's what i would have done if if you really are gonna just say we're gonna we're gonna use kalnick's leverage because we don't think he's gonna be any good use him to to offload these salaries i would have asked the braves for orlando arcia because i think arcia is not i mean he had, he was an all-star shortstop last year i don't think he's really an all-star caliber player i do think he's a better he could be a better second baseman for us than rojas and I think you probably could have gotten Arcia if you maybe just threw in like a mid-tier prospect. So then you're trading Kelnick, a mid-tier prospect who may or may not be anything, plus two big salaries for your next second baseman. That I think would have actually been a really great deal. But yes, I agree. Jackson Cower, like if this guy is on the team, I'm going to be kind of annoyed. He's had like a 5.6 ERA. Last year he had a 6.5 ERA in his career, negative one wins above replacement. So he's just not good. Um, And there's some people who are like kind of, uh, I think, just as a coping mechanism, pretending like he's going to be like some amazing piece of our bullpen. He's going to be the next Paul Sewald. You know, would that be awesome if he was? Yes. But, you know, if if you if people actually think that they're kind of just delusional. Um, So, yeah, the return bad. I just drew. Here's my question. If, If we go out and use this money. Next week, sign Yamamoto, who you last week told me that we have to absolutely sign. So let's say we do. Let's say we sign Yamamoto, twenty million, twenty-five million a season, next week. Then are you still saying this is a bad trade? Yes, because we wow. can. Because listen, Levi, it's a bad trade because we, we gave Jared Kelnick for nobody. We could have still signed Yamamoto without getting rid of Jared oh, Kelnick. But- not with the John Stanton's current budget. Yeah, so, but I'm. But, but that's something that you can't I'm mad say. At, I mean, it's. I'm it's not unfair. mad at. I'm not mad at Jerry Depoto right now. I'm not mad at Justin Hollander because this trade is clearly bad. So there's a reason they're doing it. I mean, it's it's very clear they don't think. I mean, they do not think that what we got in return is better than Jared Kelnick, right? Well, I mean, uh, clearly to the the baseball is, trade analysis website, it is. So this is, this is I don't clearly know. a salary dump. It's not close. Clearly a salary dump. And the fact that we're letting $10 million get in the way of getting rid of Jared Kalanick for the next five or six years is going to be, um, I think, a really good baseball player and he's only going to improve is laughable to me. It's laughable. It's $10 million. Suck it up. Pay the money. And we can still sign Yamamoto. I mean, that's my opinion. Levi, yeah, what, I, have I, done? I, what have we done this world, offseason? Yes. What have we done? We haven't re-signed we haven't Kale. Done anything. I we agree. haven't re-signed Tom Murphy. We got rid I of agree. Gino. We got rid of Jared Kalanick. We got rid of Marco Gonzalez. I mean, we've gotten substantially worse. Not it's not close. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. And when you that. look when you look at the trade deadline, we got rid of Paul Seawald. So it's like in the last six months, we we've got rid of four or five guys, and that's a lot. Four or five guys that yeah. 
legitimately more than half of the opening day just, lineup last season is gone. And I'm not talking about like Dylan Moore help. I'm talking about like meaningful help. Like they are guys that will be in the middle of your, you know, middle of your lineup or at in the middle of your rotation or you know your your closer. Like these are guys that help you win next year. And the guys you got in return, nobody's. They're they're guys that yeah. may help you in three years, and even then, it's it's a huge question mark. And even if a few of these guys turn into be like okay bullpen relievers, or you know, you know maybe you know a solid like six or seven in the lineup, like I still think this was the wrong move. And at the end of the day, it, it all goes. But back has Jared Kelnick ever been a solid six or seven in the lineup? Yeah, in April. Besides yeah. April, yeah. Besides April. No, I, he's like, one he's month out of he's one month out of twelve. He's twenty four. Has all the tangibles. Like I mean, this guy does he have all the tangibles? Yeah, he does. Really? Because he, he strikes hits, out a lot. He hits the ball hard. Like, and he kicks coolers when he's mad, and he slams hits the his ball hard. Plays good and... left and right field. I I don't really know what like why you're on Jared Kelly so much. His stats weren't that bad from last year. I can pull them up for you if you yeah, want. Yeah, because of April. Look at the stats outside of April. It's very, very underwhelming. Yeah, you can't just – And, again, think about when, when we went on that big winning streak. Yeah, that was yeah, when I know. he was, was gone. Without Jared Kelnick. I get that. Yeah, I don't exactly. Think that, I, okay. I don't think that causation represents the correlation. I, I, I think it does. I honestly do because we got we got worse when we had him back. We Not because of Jared Kelnick because – Cade Marlowe got Jared hot Kelnick. for a few games, and then he was back to being regular Cade Marlowe who hit 100. We we sent Cade Marlowe down when we called Jared Kelnick back up, so you can't blame Cade Marlowe on us missing the playoffs. He wasn't even on the team. No, I'm saying we got lucky with Cade Marlowe going off and hitting 400 when you know that run started, and he played good for a couple weeks. But if Cade Marlowe didn't do that, I don't think it would have gone that run. And I think I Jared don't think Kelnick... Cade Marlowe was the only responsibility for that run. No, yeah, personally. yeah, Julio hit 800. You're right. Like what? No. Yeah. Julio well, hit 800 because Jared Kelnick wasn't on the team. Like no. Like. I, like I think the not... entire team's chemistry was better without him. That's what. I, that's my. That's my argument. But so, here we go, Drew. So let's read off. This is the projected Mariners starting lineup, and obviously this website, uh, they don't know for sure who's going to fill which positions. But this is what they're saying: JP shortstop, Julio center field, Cal batting third as your catcher. That's pretty good, right? Kyle, got Kyle could definitely hit, Kyle, let, let me, Kyle could hit 210 right like next year, and I would not he be could. surprised. Ty France in the cleanup, first base, batting fifth. Who do you think this website thinks is batting fifth? They've got Josh Rojas in a five hole That's as crazy. your starting second baseman, batting Josh sixth. To start. Batting sixth, you've got Dylan Moore as your designated hitter. Batting seventh, you've got Luis Urias, uh, third base. Batting eighth, Dom Canzone, right field. And batting ninth, you have Sam Haggerty, your left fielder. On the bench, they're projecting Sebi Zavala as your backup catcher. Jose Caballero will be your utility infielder. And then the final two bench spots is going to be Taylor Trammell, who really only can play corner outfield and DH, and then Cade Marlowe, who, again, as you you really are not a big fan of Cade Marlowe, I know that. So uh, really, outside of the top four, that is – it's not. It's not very pretty. Outside of the it top, it kind of reminds me. I granted two twenty at the end of the year. I mean, but I, I mean, he he could be good. He, he was in the four hole. Yeah, I in the four hole. You don't want that. I mean, look, and this is a lineup that that I would have. You know, this is like a two thousand and twelve Mariners lineup. Levi, this is not a, a World Series contender lineup. Levi, I don't know if you remember this, but in the in the Believe game, you know that last Sunday a few years back when. So yeah, we, and he held tried, the sign. I remember when that. we tried to break the drought for the first time. Jared Kelnick, um, you know, as, as the story isn't about Jared Kelnick, but he was a big contributor in that whole movement there. You're Mr. Bad Vibe guy, and so <laughs> when that when that whole thing was going on, and, and we were trying to really push for the playoffs, we ended up losing that game. And I believe who ended up winning some. We needed some team to lose, and they ended up winning, and the Angels beat us in that game. I remember, I remember telling you. Me and Boston. I was looking at the nine, the nine guys in our lineup, and I said, "This team isn't good enough." I mean, these yeah. nine guys are not good enough. We had, you know, we had 
some last days. You know, still we had, on like, the still on the roster, by the way. We had Terenz in like the sixth hole. I mean, we were just like it was not good at all. We had Dylan Moore playing a lot. You know, he's still on the team. But my point is, the next couple of years, that lineup looked a lot better, like substantially better. Where I I looked at it and I said, this team could go to the World Series with this lineup. Yeah, it's not possible. It's probably not likely, but I could see it happening. The year before, I couldn't see it happening at all. I said zero percent chance a team with Tramel playing every other day and Terenz and et cetera, are going to make the World Series. The last two years, I've had some hope that there's a chance with the lineup we put out there that we can make the World Series. This year, the, the lineup I see right now is indicative of that 2019 Mariners. I mean, it's it's rough. Like, I don't see it happening. I really don't see it happening with this lineup right now. Even if you but, get Juan but Soto. I, I'm very, I'm very positive. Yeah, I, agree. Have, no, I agree with that. I don't think we should get Juan Soto. But I'm saying I would not have, be willing to trade a lot of our prospects right now. I would we, we have where where are holes? Left, right, first base. I think the biggest second base, is third, third base, base, DH. Third base, left field, DH. You need you need you cannot have Sam Haggerty starting every day. You cannot have Luis, I think Luis Urias and Josh Rojas, if they are in a platoon, I would love that. If they are both starting, again, you have to upgrade your infield. And I think you need a, de- a designated hitter. Rotation of DH only works when you have a bunch of good guys. Rotating Dylan Moore and Taylor Trammell and Jose Caballero as your DHs. Yeah, the, the fact they're that they're not going to do anything. The fact that you just kind of like skipped over Dom Canzone as a not being a whole is like. Well, I at- think. That's the point I, okay, we're at, I'm Levi. Saying, That's the I, I point. Think, you think Canzone we can win a World it. Series with Dom Canzone as our starting left or right fielder? Well, I think he's about the same player as Kellenic is, as far as talent. Oh, no, no. I think he is. He had he had similar stats to Kellenic last year. He's a worst defender. End of the season. By a end lot. of the season. We were start- yeah, I agree. He's the worst defender. But again, uh, so if you want a good defender, let's just call up. How about this? If we're actually, I mean, I don't think we will. I think we're going to make some moves, but. If we really aren't going to spend much money this offseason, let's just call up Jonathan Class A and start him on opening day. I'd rather see him instead of Haggerty. I'd yeah. rather Ryan Bliss at second base than Rojas because at yeah. least you're going to see what the young guys have. And then if they struggle, you can have Caballero in minor in AAA. You can have Cade Marlowe in AAA. You can call them up. But I would rather just start the guys who we actually think you know, might have some potential. I agree. I Tyler, Lock- Tyler Locklear. Remember at the start. Remember at the start of the offseason, Levi, when I said this is the biggest, this is the biggest offseason in Mariners history. I think it's proven it right now. The 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 fact that there's a lot of fans right now on the, Twitter yes, who are saying they're going to boycott. Yeah, the fact that this like the just the last few moves have made Mariners fans so irate, and I, I'm sure Mariners players as well. I'm sure they don't want to see Gino go and you know Marco and Jared Kelnick. The fact that well, I wouldn't be so sure about Jared Kelly. <laughs> oh my God, you hate Jared Kelly for no reason. But the fact that this is happening right now, and we are considering playing Ryan Bliss as a starting second baseman, proves my point from a few months ago that this off season needed to be good, and right now it's been off. It has, and that yeah, can I change. Agree. You sign, you know, you somehow swindle getting. Yamamoto and and you also get you know Bellinger and then you finish it off. But we're like, not getting two big free agents. Pete Alonso, there you go. You know, yeah, uh, hey, um, we have more money now. You know, you know, Jerry. We Poto do have said, more money. The 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 payroll is gonna be bigger this year than last he's year. Still, and he still says that he the said that last night. Bigger. Well, if last you, night he gonna said be bigger, the payroll is gonna be bigger. Signing, guys. Well, I think there. I think every. I think every team right now is still kind of playing the waiting game as far as, um, let's see where does Otani go before we make our big moves. So, in two years, I would not be surprised if we didn't have J.P. Crawford, or Cal Raleigh, like or. Well, we won't in two years. J.P. has two years left on this contract, I think. But if we and we're not our, re-signing, if our core is, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't have George Kirby. Logan Gilbert, Cal Raleigh, and J.P. Crawford, and if Julio Rodriguez is stuck on a bad team for the next eight years. And that was my point at the start of the offseason. And it all starts with this offseason, and we've gotten worse, and it has not been close. There was an argument 
at the trade deadline that we got maybe a little bit better when we trade Paul Seawald. I disagreed with it, but there was an argument. I don't think there's an argument here. No, you're you're right. There really isn't that we've gotten better. We have actually gotten 10 wins worse uh, as far as wins above replacement. So, yeah, right now we've gotten worse. I agree. I also think Mariners fans might just need to realize this. There's not that many diehard Mariners fans out there. And a lot of the – most of the people who go to Mariners games, Drew, they don't actually care if we're a World Series contending team. As long as we have Julio, they're going to show up. I disagree. Because it's 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 – celebrating a kid's birthday it's celebrating grandpa's birthday it's old people who have followed the mariners for years and they've come to peace with the fact that we're never going to be good so most mariners fans are not like us on youtube and some of the people that i interact with on twitter most mariners fans aren't like that even me the front office the front office says this and says look we're still going to be the ninth or tenth most attended team whether or not we win 85 games or 95 games so we might as well save some money and we might as well keep Julio around because we already have him for I, the next 10 years. And the fans are going to come to the games. I disagree. And that's just the business of the sport. That's the business of the sport. I disagree. They're not actually going to lose money. I disagree. Like, Hard, they're not. wholeheartedly disagree. Levi, T-Mobile Park is so much more consistently filled up now than it was 10 years ago. That's because of Julio. And no, and it's not just because of Julio. Because Julio wasn't playing on that on that I Believe trip. And that, and that, you know, that place was rocking. So... I, I disagree with you. I, I'm sorry. I, I think I that know. we need to win games to put people in seats. And Yeah, no. They need to just be solid. They can't be terrible, but they're not terrible because they have Julio and they have Kirby. So they know they're going to be good enough to get people in seats. Maybe. Not enough people Maybe. care. Well, this isn't New York. In New York, the Yankees missed the playoffs. A million people are pissed off. In Seattle, Mariners people missed are the pissed. playoffs. People are pissed. How many? How many? 10,000? 15,000? I mean, come on. There's not that many diehards out there. Fifteen. How many people go to bed at night thinking, man, I wonder what the Mariners are going to do next? A million? <laughs> no. There's no way. I don't the Yankees, know. the Dodgers, those are the teams where there's pressure. There's pressure for the Dodgers to win. Yeah, there's, there's pressure, pressure for the Yankees spend to as win. Money as they want. You know, the Mariners understand that we suck. You know who always wins? The Dodgers and the Yankees. And you know who traded you know who wouldn't trade Jared Conway for a salary dump? The Dodgers and the Yankees. You know exactly. why? Because the they Dodgers see value in guys like Kellen in a few years. Yeah. Well the Dodgers actually sign players. So that's in three why. years, if the if the Braves want to trade Jared Kellenick, they will and they'll be able to get an all star for him. I mean, I'm I calling it. Vehemently disagree with that take. I mean, okay, but that comes down to like our like our feelings about Jared Kellenick. And well, I, my really yeah, I mean, different. my feelings is that he's not going to be good. I don't think he is, and and I disagree. So I that's not going to change. So let's not beat a dead horse here. But all right, let's hear your about... predictions. Wrap the video up. Let's hear your prediction. Who? What's our next move going to be? I mean, I don't know. Like, I hope we like. I I think a trade with the Rays is pretty likely. They're saying Randy. I I want but Randy. Who knows? Whoever that third baseman is. Yeah, well, here's an interesting Paredes. thing. Again, all the all the analytical folks out there hate are saying that Paredes would be terrible. Like, bottom twenty percent like... batting bat to ball skills. Bottom five percent hard hit rate. He's getting last season. He was hard. Last season, I rated him as the sixth best third baseman in the league. I actually rated Gino as the fifth best though. So, you know, I but he's also younger and cheaper than Gino. So yeah, again, like he's a guy who he's a guy who I think could definitely contribute. I'm not sure though why the Razor would trade him because like the website, the baseball trade analysis website, which a lot of people use to kind of see if the, is this trade plausible. That website says Paredes is their number one most valuable player, and they think that he is more valuable than Miller and Wu combined. They think he is equally of value to Logan Gilbert. So according no, to that website, Rays, I think the that's Rays a one and, for one. I think the so. Mariners... What I'm saying is why if why would the Rays trade a guy who who this website, who, which is pretty accurate, honestly, for trades. Why would they say he's the most valuable guy and the Rays want to trade him? Because I think the Rays and the Mariners both know that he's overperformed expectations. And <laughs> I, I think that's pretty easy to see when you looked at the advanced numbers. I mean, it's, yeah. it's pretty ugly, honestly. So if he's overperformed, then why do we want him? Because he still will be solid. He won't be as good as he's been, but yeah. he, he's better than Urias, you know, like. 
Now, let me throw this out there. Sure. This might be an unpopular take. We're not what if we? What if we tell the Rays? We'll take, we'll take, you know who we'll take? We'll take Wander. We'll take all that money and we'll just, we'll just, we'll just eat it. 16 million a year for the next 10 years. 16 million a year, not that much. We'll take Wander, plus you give us a Rosarena, plus you give us Paredes, plus you give us Brandon Lau, second base, and we'll give you some random. And it, that, and that's the deal. The deal is we'll pay for Wander Franco because he's probably not going to play ever again. And you give us your other good players in in exchange. Why that would not? Be crazy. That would be crazy. Yeah. And I don't... then on the on the very slight chance that Wander Franco turns out to be innocent, you just netted yourself a generational third baseman. Pair him up with pair him up with JP at shortstop. Yeah, that was that's really unfortunate for the Rays. I wonder if Franco, you know, ended up doing what he did. But yeah, that would be crazy. That would I think that would break the internet. <laughs> Sixteen million a year. Just eat it. Eat the money. For a raised team that can't afford that. He's gonna be he's gonna be in prison. For a raised team that can't afford that either. They're one of the lowest, you know, payroll. Oh yeah, no. They cannot afford to have to pay sixteen million a year to a guy who's in prison. I mean, I, I won't hate it. So you pretty much just traded Evan White and Marco and Kalanick to then get Franco's contract plus Paredes, Arena, and Lau. Honestly, you might be able to get more. I think the Rays, if anyone says we'll take Wander Franco, they might give them even more than that. No, they wouldn't. Ask, throw in Tyler Glass now. Come on. $16 million a year isn't that much when you look at what they're giving. Randy and Paredes, you know, and Lau. Yeah. We'll see. Levi, who do you think who do you think show is going to before we go out, get out of here? Do you think Mariners have any chance? No, Dodgers. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. How about Yamamoto? I think we're all in on Yamamoto. We are? Because we've already publicly kind of said we're not going to trade for Soto or sign Otani, but we did clear this money out for a reason, and I think Yamamoto makes the most sense. We've also we kind need... of balked at Blake Snell as well, so I think Yamamoto is the guy we're, we're looking at right now. If we get Yamamoto and one other solid bat, I think it's not a complete failure in off season. Yeah. If that's we get fair. Yamamoto and uh, Randy Rosarena, or if we get Yamamoto and a uh, Cody Bellinger, that's pretty solid. Even though we lost like, a lot of guys, if you sign Yamamoto, you can trade. You can trade Brian Wu or Bryce Miller for yeah. a Rosarena. You still have some holes in your lineup, but that's where you say like, let's give, let's offer Jorge Soler ten million one year to be your DH. Okay, like, is he gonna say no to that? Probably not. I don't know. Let's yeah. let's offer a trade for Brett Ricker to play some left field. You know, there's there's more guys who are cheaper who you can still acquire. So, I'd say just we got to keep it given a little more time. I know it's really hard to have faith though right now. Yeah, for sure. All right, this will do it. Thank you guys for watching this NWB Sportscast. If you leave a like, comment, subscribe, make it all the way to the end of the video. Please go to um, our other channel, Coast to Coast Sports. We post there semi frequently. And yeah, that'll about do it for us. Thank you guys. And as always, go Mariners.